Okay guys, uh, how are we getting on? Hope we're all awake, wide awake. Uh, here is what we are looking at today. So as I said to you last week, we are going to do Mughrasa Idr Lubini. This will be poem number three uh, of five on our course. This poem, like all the other ones, is worth 30 marks on paper two. 30 mark question on paper two. And that is worth 5% of your overall grade. So, technically not the most important part of our course, but all the small bits add up. The next thing that it could be useful for is when you're actually doing your Irish oral exam. As we know at this stage, you have to read one of the five poems off a piece of paper in the exam, and that is worth 35 marks, which is about 5.5%. So if you get a question on this in June of 2021, and if you get to read of April 2021, one of these out of your Irish oral, well then you're looking at maybe 10.5%, so it's worth a, a big chunk of marks then. So it's important that we can say this poem properly, and that we can also answer it and understand it. Um, to give you the background of this poem, this poem was written by a woman called Nula Nihonul, who is happily married, but you wouldn't think that by the first four verses. She writes a love poem, and if you think of Shakespeare, and can I compare thee to a summer's day and all his magical language, this poem does the complete opposite. We don't get any of that at all, and you'll be surprised to see what happens here. But by the end of the poem, we start to realise that they do have a special love. We'll grow special to Aku, August Will, Kodruv, Istoke, Egg Aku, that they have an unusual relationship also. And the reason why, I suppose, is because in this poem, from start to finish, she does nothing but slate her husband for his bad looks, for his appearance, and I suppose, and how he would appear on the outside to everyone who passes him. But by the end of the poem, we actually start to realise that she's just having fun. She's teasing. And she's teasing Shakespeare and the old love poems. Her opinion is that love doesn't have to be beautiful. That it can be like her husband, scruffy, untidy, ugly. But that there are things more important like generosity, kindness and happiness. Who would have thought? So, that is what we are looking at today. Magrasa Inter Lubini. So remember, Nula Nikonal. I'm going to read the poem out here um, on page 83 of your book. So if you can go to 83, first of all, and I'm going to read the poem out. You've got the English already translated for you. So I'm just going to read it out for pronunciation. You can get a flow, get a feel for it. So follow along with me on page 83, please. So it's Mughrasa Idzer Lubini Le Nula Nikonal. Neil Mughrasa Marva Nunorni. Avian in Lordin, no er chran erbe. Is mata ein ghael ege le nonini. Is as a chusa at as fishid, no revaise ocht dre shias. Nihain rasha hyover eed ahula. Tad rochongroch da hyela erangeid dol shias. Is ma slim e shiada, ta ribi a ruiga, marvan gov Shakespeare. In a wire, delgin. Ocus commission. Tobin shed on ula. Is nor a vien shed in ya umer quere fununa. So at the bottom of the piece, you see that down here she says, It doesn't matter. He gives me apples, and when he's in good form, grapes. That is not literally what he is giving her, because if that was the case and he was ugly, I would imagine the relationship would be finished. Not the best presence to get anyone there for you people in love. So, there are obviously symbols that we'll talk about at the end of our notes also. You with me on that? So this poem can be split into four main images. One, verse one, two, three, verse three, and four. In verse one, we're looking at the blot nanori, the slow flower. Verse 2, no nini, daisies. Verse 3, ahula, up here, sorry, his eyes, ahula. And number 4, ahruiga, his hair. So two images about nature, two images about his appearance, and then one at the end saying how great he is. So four stanzas giving out about his looks, and then finally one at the end to say it doesn't matter at all because he's a great guy overall. 
So, Neil McGraw said, Marvlana Norni, Avina Nordine, Noah Cromer Bid. Let's start taking down some notes with me on this. I want you to take this down in Irish. I'm going to obviously say it, so it might seem a little bit fast, but at any stage, just pause it and rewind it. You get it down in Irish and you can rewatch it back as I explain it in English. You don't have to try to get everything down at once. You even just get the Irish down and then rewind it again to get the English. So Neil McGraw said, my loved one is not like a slow flower. A bit unusual to start a poem that my loved one isn't. Usually it's what they are and how great they are. So we're going to start with twos. Tus tubin yav ganach, a sudden start that's unusual. Tus tubin yav ganach. Next bit, we want to talk about the images. So what type of images are we given? We're given images of nature. So Kurtzer. We are given beautiful images of nature and they're put in front of us. We have Togarty on Dulra. We have again references from nature. Another word you want to use if you don't want to use Dulra? Nader. References from nature, nature. Conan Far of Vaslu to insult the man. And why do we want to insult him? Because he's very average. He's your average Joe. He's on Kojinta. He's very common. No sir. He's a typical guy. Comprod me radiac, an unrealistic, me radiac, unrealistic comprod comparison with things from nature. You can change that word to la blana, an unrealistic uh, comparison with flowers, whatever you want. They're just ideas, they're not set in stone, that's not the only way we can do it. So to recap again, a sudden, unusual start. Kurter Ivan the Alia on duo. So beautiful images, Ivan the Alia, from nature. Are put Osar Gore in front of us. Togarty on Dula, references from nature. Conan Far of Vosu to insult the man. On Kuchita, very common, your average Joe. And Kumbrad mi radio la rudi on Dura, an unrealistic comparison of things from nature. That's the first part of this poem. That's the first type of things that we're looking for. Second bit. Second bit now, let's make reference to the fact that. She's continuing on. Curtius Nyav Moihinoch. A curtius we know is a description, we've used that. And Nyav Moihinoch means unsentimental. So she's not sentimental about her love at all. She is giving us an unsentimental description. Then a Nosfer. Nosfer is like Kuchin. The Kuchin, the common Nosfer, typical. He's your typical guy. Then a Nosfer. Neil Shea. Neil Shea Dahul. He's not good looking. Neil Shea Dahul. And let's go one better. Can we make Dahul a bit better? Absolutely, we can.
Dahulach on fear means the man's beauty. So Neil Dahulach on fear al mullah, you could say. That the poet isn't praising the, the man's good looks. That's our Tishal Ginnaduk. And we're going to talk about that in a second, one or two ones that you can bring into your answers. So Dahulach on fear. Right, too fast. Dahulach on ear, the man's good looks. Again, this image talks about if he has any relationship with daisies, they'll grow from his ears when he's eight foot under. That might seem a bit bleak, and personally, if, if my partner, I'm not a partner, I'm kidding, if I, no idea what she's going to kill me, if I, uh, I'm talking about that image there. That's kind of funny that she said the only way he's going to be compared to flowers is if they grow from his ears when he's eight feet under. So what we're looking at here is saying that it's an eva. Eva Granver, a funny image. Granver wouldn't usually have the H. Eva as bondage. Look, it's feminine. It's a feminine noun, so it gives an extra age. This is a funny image. And again, it's Makanta. It's honest. She's saying he's not beautiful. He's not like all these people we see on Instagram. He's kind of funny to look at. And the only way he'll be compared to flowers is when they're growing from his ears. Alright? Nihain Glasha Hyolver the Hula. His eyes are not like musical streams. Called Rohongorov Da Hyele. They're too close together. Eragate or she is. So he's a little bit square eyed. His face may be a little bit narrow. She's Really, really insulting me here. So one of the first things I want to talk about this is egg mugga. Egg mugga fi aliyuchtanir. She's joking about aliyuchtanir, the man's beauty. Egg mugga fi joking about. Ahula Rogar, his eyes are too close together. When we're talking about this poem, what I don't want you to do is, when you're describing the images, just to pick words from the poem and put them in your answers. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry with a set of eyes can read the words in the poem and can put them down in their answers. The reason why we're doing this again, I've said this from the start of the year, is that we're using our own Irish to describe the poem. And that's why we're decorating the poem with our own Irish. Everyone Everyone who does higher Irish can tell you McGrath is about the ugly husband. They can probably give you a full blown, um, I suppose, full blown conversation, they can give you a full blown description of the man and what he looks like in English, in Maryland. They can't do it in Irish. That's what's important for us. That we can put the, I suppose, these words around the poem. And that when we go to answer the poem on paper two, the first thing you do on paper two, you open up, great, McGrath is on the poem, on the paper two, it's the poem. Boom, write down 10, 12, 15 words around the side of the poem. Us, Gaelia in Irish. And then what you do is when you come back, maybe two, two and a half hours later on paper two, you see those words. Oh yeah, great, I gave myself a heads up. These are the main words I need to get into my answer. So that's the, the reason why we're doing this again and again and again. We teach from the board. And we put all our different bits of Irish around it. Tahula Rogar, his eyes are too close together. Tashe Granver, it's funny. Tashe Eggshill, Tashe Differ, Tashe Spatial, Tashe Simmel. You've used Granver already? Don't use it again, it's interesting. Gurfader Lenny, that she can. Ea Voslu, insult him. Go publicly, publicly. I know personally, if my partner thought I had morning breath, if I was a little bit smelly, if there was something wrong with me, and she decided to, to post it as a big post on Instagram about all Shane's faults and flaws. I wouldn't be already happy. I think, you know, you could have said that stuff to me first, whereas here, she's just throwing it all out on the page for everyone to see. And it's funny. 
at his expense, I suppose, or at his expense, I should say. Thus, should Grandberg refer to any A of Austin Phi B? Maybe it's a modern description. It's Kirchhoff's newer Einstein. It's a modern description of love. That's what we're talking about here. It's more slim Ishia that if silk is smooth, the strands of his hair, like Shakespeare's mysterious woman, is like barbed wire. Here again, talking about his physical appearance. Come on here. Gruig, what type of hair does he have? The strands of his hair are like barbed wire. So he is gruig. Chachach. Charaf. He has hair that's kachuk, maybe curly, garov, a bit rough, fion, wild, and they all take a H because brewing, the animal of the noun, is body and chinook, it's feminine. What else do we want to say about him here? The Ribia Guga, Marvango Shakespeare, in a wire, delicately. Arish, again. Nilan Fjar Mjaltov. The man isn't enticing. He's no Brad Pitt. As you walk by, you wouldn't take a, a second look back at him to see if he's good looking or not. He's your average Joe. He's no three. He's typical, as we would say. Okay? Octagon on Lagor, you guys, the reader. Octagon ship, it's Laird Dief. Nock, Kershius, Sharavesho. It's not a bitter or it's not an intense description. You kind of realize at this stage that she's not really, really giving out about him, that she's more joking or making fun of. Like Spuka or like Maga, we can put in here. Like Spuka or like Maga. Joking, a era. This poem is a satire. Ear, a satire. And again, what's the example I always give of a satire? Think of The Simpsons when you make fun of something in a light-hearted way. So it's an ear, it's a satire. And she is a muggle or an ear, making fun of or joking, satiring, anything like that at all. And that's the point we want to get there. So there are the descriptions of the man. And when you're talking about his eyes and his hair, you want to say Rogar for his eyes, not Rokongaru. You want to say, you don't want to use barbed wire for his hair. You want to say it's wild, it's rough, it's curly, it's all over the shop. Untidy maybe is Minete. Oh, no, don't tell there. It's untidy, not presentable. Here, it's an unsentimental description from the start, and that it's funny that she's using nature to show his, I suppose, his, his limits. You're going to put another one back here, maybe? Look to that. The man's faults, look to that on here. And finally, we're going to get to the last stanza. And this is where it, it kind of flips, it goes on its head. Now, I've run out of space, so I'm going to have to take these last two points off the board. So again, if you need these, you need to go back, rewind and go back again. It's come a lesson villa, but the poet doesn't care. Again, we just don't say it's come a shin. It's come a lesson villa, the poet doesn't care. Togan on fire, Aradi, he looks after her. And what does she show us in the end? She shows us that personality is more valuable than looks. And that's what we're going to talk about here.
Larry and on Phil are doing, the poet shows us. Go well, Parson Tuck, that personality. Nis Lugfra. Lugfra to be valuable. Nis Lugfra more valuable. No Dahulach than Lux. That personality is more valuable than Lux. And I suppose that's the main message of the poem. The trace that he may have, he has his Kanastov. So he's got his Kanastov, his kindness. His flahuluk, his generosity, and his makantuk, his honesty. They're more important than the, the shallow opinion of most that looks are vital or that looks are really good looking. That's the, the understanding of this poem, guys. And what I want us to do when you finish up here with me today, the idea is to get all this new vocab listed out. Get it somewhere, get used to it, get familiar with it, so when we're going on to our next exercise, Tomorrow, what we're going to be looking at is looking at some vocab about the poem. We're going to be looking at some translations and looking at notes. So the last thing you want me to do is stop in every two seconds. So tonight, what I want you to do is to get familiar with all these new words. I haven't just plucked them out of the sky, they're in the notes at later stages. So that's why I tactically put them around the poem. A few things up here. But we will go on in a few minutes to look at answering a question on this next week. We're going to use the breeder Sarah a lot to remind us the free verb. When it's been done, we don't know by who. So let's look at the verbs that are going to be useful to us. So five fighter. Feck. Fector. Lariter. To give. Tucker. So to get, to see, to show, to understand, to create, and to give. They're the verbs in the present tense. We're going to be using that. The poet gives us, or it's shown to us. We get, it's given to us. You can put them in the breeder ser, or you can put them in the, the mwid or the shin version as well also. One word that I've used a lot there is on far. Tisho get it up for that, in the singular, on ear. Dahulach on ear. And another one you're going to use a lot in this is Don, the poem. On Don, but something on. Tama on Don. The eyes and the tissue get it up. This bit here puts it in the tissue get it up here. So we'll just look out for a few common ones that we're going to be using. So tonight for homework, I want all that stuff laid out somewhere in your copy. I want it translated across words for words. It does have to be the whole sentence, but things like Nyavganok and usual. Dual in nature, miralic, unrealistic, been a nosefer, typical person, looked in on the ear, the man's fault, niab mainuk, unsentimental, that you're familiar with that vocab for when we pick up again tomorrow. Okay, guys, we'll cut it there. See you tomorrow.